Hey guys, the amazing folks at Hughes and Kintner sent me a Grand Meister Deluxe 40 and I want to share it with you because it is loaded with features and a lot of you have been asking about it because it's one of the new kind of up and coming amps in this price category and uh, I want to tell you right now it doesn't disappoint. So I want to go through some of the features, all the different channels and show you the things I liked about the amp. They give you a gain control for each channel, and the gain control has, of course, a lot of saturation, a lot of distortion. And the one thing I learned was you gotta turn that down and then use the attenuation on the back. So right now I'm running it in five watt mode. Run it five watts, run the master up a little bit, and you get this kind of... clean channel let's go to the clean channel if I run the the uh, the gain channel a little hard just a little bit so more than let's say two put it at uh, you know like a four or five So with that, you'll notice there's just a little bit of a breakup at the end of the note. I actually like that. There's a lot of clean amps that you want to have ultra clean. This will do that as well. If you turn that gain control down, we'll do that same thing again. This is with the gain down, but the uh, volume up on the clean channel. I also want to address the single coil issue uh, because it is on the brighter side of the amps. That was another issue that a lot of you guys emailed me and said, hey, uh, how does it sound with strats? I'm going to go ahead and put this in the single coil position on this guitar. I'm actually on a single coil on the bridge. If you're going to run your humbucker guitar, you probably want to run, if you like a really clean tone, go ahead and run the gain a little low, run that volume a little, little high, and you'll get a really nice full bodied ultra clean tone with some warm, uh, with some warm uh, low frequencies in there. However, if you're going to use a single coil like I'm doing right now, well, you got to learn to use these controls. Definitely use the gain to its advantages. In other words, uh, when using a lower output pickup, run the gain on the clean a little hotter. When you're using a higher output pickup, go ahead and bring that gain back down. You're going to have to do that, just like any other amp. But this amp is definitely full of options, and it's temperamental that way. So you want to learn it. Now, if you were to go ahead and hit the bridge position uh, and go ahead, this is now going to be my humbucker in the bridge. Uh, now you can see how that's going to push the amp a little bit harder and sound a little bit fuller. Uh, and I like this tone maybe a little better. <laughs> Uh, there's a plethora of effects. There's a phaser, there's a flanger, there's a tremolo. All of those are programmable. There's a foot switch. You can you can do pretty much anything with it. This will do anything that you can pretty much want an amp uh, to do when it comes to accessing the effects and, and doing all that stuff. So we're going to go ahead and go to the crunch channel, turn the boost off. And the boost is programmable to every single channel. So you get that on every channel. So four channels with the boost engaged in every channel. You can turn it on and off. Here's your crunch channel. One thing I liked about this channel was run the gain a little hotter, and now what I can do is run my actual volume control on my guitar. So I'll use that to clean up the amp. So here's the amp in the crunch channel, and what I'm doing is using the guitar backed off just a little bit.
have is the lead channel. Now, the lead channel is my least favorite of the four channels, but it's still a good channel. The Ultra, is, to me, is the over-the-top. It just sounds great for leads. Gets you into the metal territory really well. But uh, the uh, lead channel is uh, it's great, but it's definitely where some people are complaining about there being a little bit of fizz on the distortion end. You really have to tame that beast when it comes to turning that gain down. This is the gain setting that I like. It's a little less than halfway, and if I want more, I use the boost again. Running the amp at a lower wattage and driving that master will definitely let the amp open up and let the amp's tones come through. So let's go ahead and show you that. Now this is a good point to segue into another feature on the amp that is really impressive. This amp, uh, if I turn this up, yep, you're gonna get a little squealing because I'm a little close to the amp, right? And a little bit more noise. You can hear that hiss coming through. This has a built-in noise gate. Now what's impressive about that is on the back end, there's an adjustment for the noise gate. So you can use the noise gate to get really intense, which will help for gent, uh, or you can back it off just to help clean up, um, uh, you know, your, your overall hiss between songs. Again, another thing that you're just like, wow, <laughs> I don't know what they could have not put in this amp. I mean, if they had a DI box that was amazing, that would probably be the only thing left to put, wait a minute. It has their famous red box in it too, and that gives it an amazing DI sound. So what I'll do is I'll give you a sample of the DI box. brings us to the last channel, the Ultra Channel. It's kind of where we started on this video, but that's okay. Uh, the Ultra Channel is definitely, I, I love the clean, I really love the crunch, and I love the Ultra. Uh, and it's hard to pick my favorite. The Ultra is definitely my mood channel. In other words, if I'm in the mood for this channel, I love it. Uh, and it's got a ton of gain. I'm running the gain again low. You want to back that gain off. So now we gotta check it out with the boost engage. Now again, this is where the amp goes crazy, but you can clean it up even with the ultra gain setting on boost. I'm gonna show you we, how we can clean it up from clean to dirty. two things that I really, really think that this amp would benefit from. First of all, it has handles on each side, and that's a little cumbersome to pick up. You gotta grab each side. It would be nicer if it had a handle in the center. However, that's not a make or breaker. The thing that really, I think the amp really needs really badly is a taller feet. And the reason is, is right now it's sitting on a 212 cabinet, but the issue I had was if I want to take it to a gig and take a little 112 cabinet with handle on top, or if I want to use a cabinet somebody else has and it has a handle on top, the amp won't sit on top of the cabinet. It rocks over the handle and it makes you a little nervous. So taller feet would really be a benefit to this amp. Why have this amp that can do anything if you could take it with you if you can't just use whatever cabinets are available there? So especially since you're going to DI out and give your direct mix to the audience. So I really think taller feet would be a huge benefit. The last question that was asked to me was, what did I think about how hot it got? This is pretty hot. As you can see, the tubes are right on top of this piece of metal. I don't know if it's tin or aluminum or what it is, but it gets rather warm. And so I promised uh, that I would do an experiment for uh, one of the viewers. So here's what we're gonna do. I ran the amp 
for 24 hours before starting this video. So this amp has been running hot for 24 hours. So I said I would show him how hot it got and if it got dangerous. So let's take a look at that. All right, so I just turned the Hughes & Kinder amp on. We're gonna run it for 24 hours before I do the official review. We'll come back in a few hours and check how it's doing. I'm not running it in standby mode. I'm running it full heat. It is got a load against it, so it should be fine. We're just gonna run it hot and I'm gonna go ahead and plug a guitar into it and uh, leave it plugged in. Okay, so it's been about uh, five hours and uh, it's pretty hot. Uh, tubes are glowing. It's definitely warm to the touch. When it kind of feels, it kind of feels like when you first touch it, it's hot, like it would burn your hand, but then you can kind of realize you can keep your hand on it. So we'll go ahead and check it. Let's turn the guitar on. Obviously works. So we'll come back and check it in a little bit. Okay, so now it's been running for about 12, 13-ish hours. Uh, again, hot. Doesn't feel hotter. In fact, it feels a little cooler right there. Maybe something broke. <laughs> I don't know. Does it? Yeah, it feels weird. Doesn't feel hot. It feels warm. Don't get me wrong. Warm, but not hot. But go ahead and check the guitar. Yeah, that's working. So it's been running for over 24 hours. Definitely warm to the touch. Go ahead and turn on the guitar. Definitely still making sound, still works. All right, so there you have it. Uh, that's a pretty grueling test to put the amp through. 24 hours, it's definitely not doing anything to the amp. Even though, like I said, at first touch, it kind of makes you feel like maybe it's hotter than it is. I think it's just an impression because you're so used to not feeling a lot of heat coming off an amp. As always, I want to thank all of you for your time. And until next time, know your gear. <laughs>